When it comes to your laundry, suds and bubbles are nothing more than a marketing tool. Not only do they do absolutely nothing to help clean your clothes, they actually make your laundry even dirtier. The way detergent removes soils from your laundry is by loosening the soil so that they come out of the fibers of your clothing, and then bonding to the soil so that everything can be flushed out together during the rinse cycle. If you use too much detergent or the wrong kind of detergent, the excess detergent molecules react with the water molecules instead of the soil since there isn't any soil left for them to attach themselves to. Bubbles form in soapy water because the surfactant molecules lower the surface tension of the water molecules pushing them apart from each other. The combination of water and surfactants creates a thin film, which traps air and forms into bubbles. Bubbles created during the wash cycle will also pick up some of the soils that are still loose and floating around in the dirty wash water, which is why the rinse cycle is so important. But if you use too much detergent or the wrong kind of detergent, your washing machine doesn't have any way of knowing that, so it won't rinse for long enough or with enough water to effectively rinse all of the extra suds out of your laundry and your machine. When your washer goes to drain the rinse water, those dirty detergent bubbles will remain on top of the water and then on top of your laundry once the washer drains out as much water as it can. The force of the spin cycle will then pull the excess water out, but the soils will be redeposited into the fibers of your clothing. And any excess that doesn't wind up inside the fibers of your clothing will start to build up on the internal parts of your washing machine. This is why your washing machine or your clothing may smell bad at the end of a cycle if you either use too much laundry detergent, or if your machine already has a detergent buildup from previous instances of using too much. In addition to redepositing dirty detergent water onto your clothing, too many suds prevent a good wash by cushioning the clothes from rubbing against one another. Another. It's this rubbing that helps the clothes get as clean as possible. So basically, too many suds has the exact opposite effect from what most people expect. And if you're seeing suds even after the rinse cycle, your clothes are not getting clean. Not only can suds prevent your laundry from getting clean, but they can also prevent your washing machine from draining properly by creating a condition commonly referred to as suds lock. If there are too many bubbles, your washing machine's drain pump can't pull them all out. Think of it like trying to finish a drink that had foam or whipped cream on top. At the very end of the drink, when all the liquid is gone and you're trying to get the last of that foam through your straw, it doesn't really work unless you move the straw around. This is because once all the liquid is gone, the tiny bubbles forming that foam are too light. They cling to the insides of the cup, breaking suction from the straw and preventing the straw from being able to suck them up. Your washing machine's drain pump is stuck where it is. It can't move around to pull out all of the bubbles that cling to your washing machine and your laundry once all the water is gone. So those dirty, soapy bubbles remain inside the washer and begin to form a buildup inside of your machine and inside of your laundry if you let it go for long enough, which is why clothing can start to look dingy. A buildup inside of your washing machine can cause a wide variety of different issues, including making your washing machine shake or go out of balance more often, preventing your washing machine from fully draining, clothing getting stained when excess bits of that buildup begin to flake off, making your washing machine and your laundry stink, and more. Especially with modern day laundry detergents that are super concentrated and with high efficiency washing machines that use less water, it's easier than ever to use too much laundry detergent, which is why it's important to maintain your washing machine by running a washing machine cleaning product through it about once a month. Even if you think you don't use too much detergent. Even if you don't use too much detergent, it's important to make sure you're using the correct kind of detergent. If you have a high efficiency washing machine, using the correct kind of detergent for your machine makes a much bigger difference. This is because high efficiency washers wash your clothes by washing with less water for a longer amount of time. Because they agitate your clothing for longer, HE washers don't need to use a lot of water, or even hot water, to get your clothes just as clean as older washing machines. Assuming you're using them correctly, of course. The trade-off of having a longer cycle time allows them to use less water, and have Having less weight in the drum and not needing to use hot water allows HE washing machines to use even less electricity despite the longer cycle times. While this is a great improvement in terms of sustainability, using less water means the detergent doesn't get as diluted, which means that if you use too much detergent or the wrong kind of detergent, a detergent buildup can occur much more quickly and can cause more issues if the washing machine is not being properly maintained. If you have a high efficiency washing machine, you should only be using laundry detergents that are made to be used in HE washing machines. These products will always have the HE logo somewhere on the packaging as shown here. One of the easiest ways to tell if a soap or detergent is okay to use in your high efficiency washing machine is to see if it creates excessive suds that want to hang around. Because if it does, it shouldn't go in your washer. The reason why it's so important to use high efficiency laundry detergent in a high efficiency washing machine is because HE detergents will often contain suds reducing agents to prevent them from foaming up, while non-HE or low quality soaps and detergents will produce too many bubbles to work correctly in an HE machine. To better explain what I'm talking about, I took seven different soaps and detergents that are commonly used to wash laundry, whether they're the correct substance for the job or not. Into each test tube, I put a tiny amount of one of the substances, filled it the rest of the way with water, and shook them up. The goal of this experiment is to see which of these substances produces the most suds, and to see how long the suds produced linger once the water is still. If a soap, detergent, or other cleaning agent produces a lot of suds that take a long time to pop, that's a substance that shouldn't be used in your washing machine. Because again, 
Suds are bad, y'all. Okay, onto the experiment. First, I put a tiny amount of each substance into their respective test tubes. For liquids, I did a single drop. For the solid soap bars, I did a small shaving of the bar. And for the detergent sheet, I tore off a tiny corner of it. Then I filled each test tube with roughly one tablespoon of water at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. In a washing machine, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit is generally considered cold, 90 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit is considered warm, and the hot setting is usually around 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So while 72 degrees Fahrenheit is in the middle of the cold range, different fabrics and soils require different temperatures to be cleaned, and the majority of laundry detergents on the market are rated to work at temperatures as low as 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so 72 should work just fine. I did my best to get the water level of each of them equal, but honestly because it's such a small amount of water to begin with, and because the detergents and soaps are so concentrated, the slightly different amounts here wouldn't even be enough to skew the data, so I'm not that worried about it. I then put the cap on each test tube and shook all of them together with the same amount of force the same number of times. We want to see some bubbles, because there aren't any soils in this water, so bubbles are to be expected, but we don't want to see excessive bubbles. The initial results from this gentle agitation were pretty much what I expected. Going from least amount of suds created to the most, the control tube of plain water made a few bubbles from being shaken, but they all popped pretty much instantly. The bar hand soap and laundry detergent bar made the least amount of bubbles. Not because they're good for your washing machine, but because solid soap bars like that are designed for hand washing only and to break down in hot water. This water was too cold and didn't have enough agitation like you would get with hand washing for them to properly break down, which is why you should never use solid soap bars in your washing machine. Yes, even if you grate them, because again, this was just a tiny shaving of one of those bars. High efficiency laundry detergent had the next lowest amount of bubbles, which is exactly what we want here. Some bubbles, but not excessive bubbles. Non-high efficiency laundry detergent. And for the record, I used the same brand as the HE detergent, but this one very specifically did not have the HE logo on the bottle, had slightly more bubbles than the HE version. Liquid dish soap had the next highest amount of suds. A lot of people use liquid dish soap either as a stain pretreat or to get their whites whiter. If you're going to use it as a pretreat, just make sure you let that soak in and do its job, but make sure you rinse it out before putting it into your washing machine. As for making your whites whiter, if you want to do that job without making suds, bluing liquid is the product you're looking for, and it's been around since the 1800s. After dish soap, the detergent sheet made the next highest amount of suds. If you weren't aware, many different people have tested out detergent sheets and have found that they're consistently rated among the worst performing detergents on the market, cleaning only marginally better than water alone. So the fact that they also make some of the most suds isn't that surprising to me. And finally, the substance that made the most suds during the gentle agitation was a dish power spray. This is also a very popular product used as a stain pretreat, and everything I said about liquid dish soap goes for this as well. Except in some cases, this product is even worse because it's even more concentrated. After the gentle agitation test, I performed a heavy agitation test, shaking each test tube much more vigorously for the same amount of time each. A heavier agitation allowed more of the different soaps and detergents to break down better because we're compensating for that lower temperature with a higher mechanical action. In that respect, it's similar to the difference between a front-loading washing machine and a top-loading washing machine. The downside of a higher mechanical action in a washing machine is that it's rougher on your clothes, so your clothes will get more faded, pill more quickly, and will generally wear down faster in a machine with an agitator due to the increased water temperatures and mechanical action. After shaking each tube, I then let them sit for around 10 minutes, and these were the results. Again, the tube with the least amount of suds was the water, which was the control. The tube with the next lowest amount of suds was the hand soap, which may be a little surprising, but this is because hand soaps are made for your hands and often contain lotions. These lotions can reduce the amount of bubbles, but they also deposit onto your laundry. Lotions in laundry can make your clothes dingy and leave stains, so leave the lotions for your hands. Then, in third and fourth place, respectively, for least amount of suds, we again have high efficiency laundry detergent and non-high efficiency laundry detergent. Wow, it's almost like these laundry detergents were made to be used in a washing machine. Tied, no pun intended, for fifth and sixth place were the solid detergent bar and the dish power spray, with the detergent sheet following closely behind in seventh place. And in last place, with the most amount of suds, is the liquid dish soap, which had so many suds even after 10 minutes that they still went all the way to the top. This photo was taken an hour and 45 minutes later, which gives you an even better idea for just how long some of these bubbles linger. Now imagine these bubbles lingering inside of your washing machine even after a rinse and drain, and you can start to understand how a detergent buildup can form. 
form. Excessive suds in laundry are bad. They can prevent your clothes from getting clean, can make your washing machine and your clothing smell bad, and can even break your washing machine. This experiment demonstrates why it's so important to use the correct products for your laundry and your machine. Don't fall for the laundry detergent hacks and the homemade detergent recipes. There are already plenty of products on the market specifically designed and engineered for your laundry needs, and they do it way better than a cleaning hack ever could.